because we are honored. If you can stand, please, we are honored and privileged to have one of our very own man of God, amen, that he is a father in the natural, amen, and amen, he can be a father in the spiritual too, much wisdom, much wisdom to impart, amen, we thank God for our very own, so at this time we're going to ask without further ado, we're going to receive this man of God, he's trying to figure out how to get around from that corner, he plays several hats around here, amen, but at this time receive in love our very own Pastor Michael Gwynn, amen. Yeah. Look to your neighbor and say, I will walk from the inside. Look to somebody else and say, I will walk from the inside. Hallelujah. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we come before your presence. God, knowing that you cannot lie. For God, you have called us at this appointed time. For it's by your spirit, God, that you say that we must worship you. For when we worship you in spirit and in truth, God, you can make a way out of nowhere. Father, we thank you right now for we realize that we must be made whole, body, soul, and spirit. But in order for us to make it on this journey, God, we must learn how to walk from the inside. For truly, God, the real man is down. Some women that are both, at times, unfortunately, have to wear both hats. Yes. But you know, that's all right. For I am convinced in my mind that God will provide every circumstance. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make a difference what we're going through. Right. God is the one that can provide for that. And for those of you, I thank God for the apostle. Amen. And unfortunately, Ernest is not here today. I know he desired to be here with us because he had to work. But amen. I love what she mentioned. She said, honor your parents, mm -hmm. your father, mm -hmm. of course, as well as your mother. Yes. There are many people, oh my God. just like in anything, you never realize what you have until it's gone. Yes, sir. My love. Yes, sir. I say this a lot of time, and even this week, I've had a lot of situations, or last week, this week, I had some things that happened at the house and laid the foundation. Yes, please. But anyway, I had some situations that happened at the house, and I had some things that were breaking around the house. How many people that know what I'm talking about? If you own a home, sometimes things break, don't they? Yes. Oh, yeah. huh? Stuff will go out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think I had one situation. I had about two or three. <laughs> <laughs> but one of them was underneath the sink in the kitchen. Hmm. Uh, all of a sudden, the drains backed up. It backed up so bad it had... Uh, in other words, when you ran the water, the water, of course, wouldn't go out like it's supposed to, so the, the water and stuff was coming back up in there. And it wouldn't drain properly. 
So I got down there and I began to start looking at it and all of a sudden, things that I had seen my father do, things that I had watched, and let me tell y'all something, sometime, I don't know how y'all was, but I was a bad boy. Yeah. Hear me now. <laughs> my father had so much knowledge, skill, and wisdom and things that he could do with his hands. And those of you, I say to you right now, if you're around a parent that has the ability to go in things and make things, something break, they fix it, oh, you better watch them. Watch that. Huh? Every man in here watch everything that your father do. Because I'm going to tell you something. Even though, and I complain when he say, a boy, get here. I hate it because you just call me a boy. Boy, give me a wrench. <laughs> boy, go over there, give me a screwdriver. <laughs> you know how we young men are. I'm a man. <laughs> call me a boy. I'm a man. You see, when I'm out there with the boys, you know, we all want to lift each other up. We all think we men and we grow. Mm. Can't pay it like men. <laughs> I thought I was grown. You hear what I'm saying? Right. So with manhood comes what? Responsibility. All right. And with responsibility comes knowledge, skill, and wisdom. And with responsibility come kindness and caring of what you're doing. And in the midst of what my father actually was doing, he was training me, just like that karate kid thing. Wax on, wax off. Huh? He was training me in the same process to let me know that sometime in life, if you live long enough and you have your own kids, something's going to break down. Huh? All right. And I used to get so mad. And then after a while, he just said, go ahead, just leave, I got it. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, I used to watch one, one neighbor kid. He used to come over there and he would spend time with dad, talk with my dad. My dad would show him everything. Now, I don't know how good he is, but see, my father saw something in me that I didn't see. Here we go now. Right, right. He saw the gift that was inside me. All I had to do was look at something, and then all of a sudden, I could take that thing and put it together and take my hands and make it work. Huh? Even though I complained and I bickered and I went against everything he said, my father saw in me the ability to I fix you. things. I got you. Yes, yes. You bring it home now. Yes. Yes. So it is with the Holy Spirit of God. God sees things that's inside of us that you got the ability, even though it breaks, you I know that you can fix it. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Jesus, I cry on certain occasions. <laughs> and he wept when he cried. But then my mind went back to what my dad was trying to do. I yearned to say to him, Dad, I thank you for what you were showing me. Even though I was stubborn and I was hard-headed, you were teaching me the facts of life. And I yearn for that opportunity to be with him and see him. I thank God for my son back there in the back, Michael. Every time I do something, I don't have to call him for nothing. He comes down there and instantly helps me. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful, my God. Instantly. Beautiful. But the Bible tells me if you train up a child in a way that it should go. Yes. As it get older, it may depart to some way, but God will do what? Bring it back. But he had a desire to be a helper. Some people had that. Yes. And I said to myself, wow, if only I had been the young man that my son is. Wow. Look what I would have made of. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Here we go. Fainted not. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Now, God let us know here that Isaiah caught a glimpse of what God is able to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you today that even though you may have the strongest man, young man, doesn't make a difference. Eventually, in anything that we do, we're going to do what? You're going to faint. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are not conditioned to run so many miles without getting tired. Right. Your body, even when you get to the point and you run a many miles, even in the military, they show you how to what? You have to cool down, you have to slow down, and then you have to do what? Walk. But you only can do that for a period of time. Eventually, these old bodies will do what? They would wear out. Yes. But in this scripture, it tells us that the God, the creator of heaven and earth, he never faints. He's, He's never weary. Yeah. Huh? He never gets tired. Right. Even though we turn our back on him and we go the opposite direction, God never gives up on yeah, us. Yeah. 
God. Thank you, Lord. Even though God has been blessing you and allowing things in your life to multiply and have given you the increase of your heart's desire, and even though that door might have been closed, and all of a sudden God, because of your prayer, has opened that door that you can walk in. Yes. He never gives up on us. My God, never. Thank you, Lord. He never gives up on us. But sometimes, saints of God, I'm here to say today, sometimes we give up on one another. Yes. Come see Jesus, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Amen. holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. If your mind's going to be transformed, I remember Paul saying, he says, also let this mind that be in who Christ? Be also what in you. So in other words, Jesus is looking for us to think like him, walk like him, yeah. talk like him. Why? Because when you do that, the inner man begins to walk on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That inner man that's hidden from the natural eye begins to walk on the outside. Mm. Uh -huh. yes. There's a reason why God said when he prayed for many of them, he says, be thou made whole. Teach us. That is W-H-O-L-E. Yes. He means complete. We've been uh, yes. studying on that. Yes. He's talking about what? The body, soul, and the spirit. And I'm going to tell you right now, if your body, soul, and spirit is not complete, the saints, you're going to struggle. Yes. Huh? Come on. Make it plain. You won't think that you're able to live a righteous and holy life, and all of a sudden what happens? Your flesh will get out of order. Your yes. flesh will push the spirit man off yes. and sit on the throne and try to take you out. World. That's the part I love about God. Yes. You falling out on your knees, you crying out to God, and Lord God, I'm sick of this. God, I don't want to do it no more. God, please make a way of an escape. You then your flesh will tell you, get up. You better you done prayed enough. Yeah. You can handle that. Listen. It's so conniving. It's not that blunt. It'll tell you, it always encourages you, say, oh, you can have that. God is with you. You can have that. Then you get out of the mist, and all of a sudden, you get hit from the left, from the right, and the next thing you know, you find yourself doing what you did not want to do. God is calling us to be the man inside.
child of God. Hallelujah. Hear me, hear me now. Hear me now. Listen to this. I want y'all to see this miracle that's about to happen in this church. Even the youths shall faint. Yes. And be weary. Now everybody in here know that when you were young, and those of you that are young, ain't no other old guys in here can probably outrun any of y'all for long distance unless we've been trained. Right. For the period of time, right. we'll eventually run out. But you younger guys got what more strength? Come on. You can journey on further than we could unless I've been what training. Unless we've been training. Yes. Now don't get it twisted now. Yes. <laughs> That's right they better not try us now. <laughs> Surprise, you surprise, <laughs> But anyway, so you guys got that ability to run on. Mm -hmm. A little bit more strength. That's why a lot of times, even in football and sports, you ever notice that a lot of the guys are what? They're young. Yes. These guys are retiring in what? Their 30s. Yes. And they consider the old men when they get in their late 30s. Oh, God. All right. Jesus. I faint and be weary. But the young man shall utterly fall. Listen to this. But they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord. Good God. See, waiting is your salvation. Waiting is your deliverance. Waiting is your guidance. See, in order to be led, you got to first learn how to wait. You cannot be a follower if you don't know how to wait. You can have the right thing and do it at the wrong time and create a mock of what God wants you to do. But they that wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up mm -hmm. with wings mm -hmm. as eagles. Now I want y'all to see this. Visualize in your mind. An eagle, and I know y'all know I'm not talking about animals, so do it again. That's something y'all expect me to do anyway. So we just... Let me tell you about an eagle. Y'all want to hear about everybody say, I want to hear about the eagle. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, what an eagle will do, the eagle is strong. It has strong wings. Yes. The wings are as, as long as six feet. Wow. In a span. That's right. From one end wing to the other end. Six feet. Now, how many people in here are six feet tall, honestly? <laughs> It ain't got many of us. <laughs> 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 right, wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Uh, show Aunt Deacon. I didn't forget about you. Yes, sir. You know what I'm about. Yes, sir. I want y'all to stand at six feet. Please. Wow. Over six feet. Now look at that. Wow. Thank you so much, gentle man. <laughs> All right, here we go. I ain't talking 5'11". <laughs> 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 well, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. You do look six feet. Yeah. All right, y'all right, guys, how many people y'all count? Look out there, how many people y'all see? Five people, right? Uh, all right, y'all sit down. Now, yeah, all the men, since it's Father's Day, I want everybody else to stand up. That's not six feet. Good God for my. Now, we, we are what? The majority. <laughs> and the ones that are over six feet are what? Minority. The minority. All right, they may be seated. <laughs> so in other words, God blessed this eagle in such a way that this gift that he had to allow his wings to be over six feet long was a special anointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody special. don't have, every bird don't have the ability to have six oh, feet wingspan. Come on. But the eagle does. But this is the great mystery here. What the secret is, is that the bird, though it has strong wings, its bones are stronger in the inside. God from it. it is the inside that's stronger than the outside. It is the inside that make the outside strong. Did you hear what I'm saying? It is the inside of God inside you that make the outside strong. Did you hear me now? It is the inside that makes you the man and woman of God that you are today. It's the inside. I was over in Germany, mm. and my wife, young thing, <laughs> <laughs> we were young though. Watch out. I got to the point.
morning, I start getting homesick. Hear me now. Come on now. They had me in there. They didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh-huh. They put me in a war with people that had tuberculosis. Oh, and lung disease. And because I coughed, the people in there was mad at me. Because see, that's how you, if you got the trait, if a person, how many nurses in here? I see you throwing in, you know what I'm talking about. If a person has the trait, and you cough, and you got the disease, and you cough, they'll get it. Wow. They'll get it. The immune system is not strong enough. So you coughing, you can imagine. How them guys in there were mad at me. Every time I said, I always coughed at night. And I can see them guys looking at me like, man, I'm gonna bust this guy upside his head. <laughs> and then finally, before they found out I had pneumonia, I got tired. I went in the bathroom. Well, nobody around. Just me and the inner man. And I laid hands on myself. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, you heal me in Jesus' name. Yeah. Left out of there, just that simple. Went down and laid in the bed the next morning because I couldn't sweat. I woke up the next morning and everything went wet. Mm. The bed was wet. Oh, nice. And you'll go insane. You'll die. Now, babies got the ability to take higher temperatures than we can. Amen. But you let your temperature be 102, 103, and see if they won't be rushing you to the doctor, trying to get it down to find out. But anyway, I woke up that morning, I started hollering like a little kid. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Running around the place. Nurse said, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, I, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately, a short time after that, they came and said, oh, by the way, we found out what's wrong with you. Mm. You just had pneumonia. <laughs> But I said that earlier because the reason I got tired, I wanted to go home. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I was missing my wife. Now think about it. If I had prayed the day I got there, what do y'all think would have happened? I would have been there that long. See, a lot of times we allow stuff to happen to us that God want to get you out of it, but we think we can handle it. And because we think we can handle it, we keep laying in the stuff. We lay it all in this mess. Oh, yeah. I know I need to get up out. I just don't understand. They got the man, we said, hey, chick, come back up and lay right on you. Come on, 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 Remember, spirits transcend the yeah. spiritual world and come into the natural. Yeah. Yeah. You can run and close 14 doors yeah. and put a lock on it. If that spirit coming for you, it's coming in there. It's coming <laughs> but the key is, when the problem comes at, Christians got the power. Right, and run. And scared, just like Elijah, yeah. got the power. Yeah. Now, Elijah was a powerful oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Come on now. Elijah had the ability to call. This man was powerful. Yeah. Anything he spoke from his mouth, God came and did exactly what he said. In other words, Elijah communed with God in the spirit. Yes. 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 What happened to Elijah when he did not allow the inside man to walk? Yes. He got in flesh. And when Jezebel said to him, today, the same thing you did to my prophets, uh -huh. I'm going to do to you. Yes. That man of God with all that power took all the God. He took off running. All the power of God in the inside. And he ran in what? Fear. Come on. We lose because of fear. There it is. There it is. Wow. Good word. Yes, sir. Fear grips us. Uh -huh. My God. Fear stops the hand of God. My God. Fear stops miracles from coming. You ain't going to bother you. He tried to come against your mind, your intellects. It's not going to bother you. He tried to come up against the spirit man, and the spirit man will lay the word out on him in the name of Jesus. But God is looking for holiness. You are special, saints. Oh, you are so special. So many times we struggle and we labor to 
try to find that sense of peace, that sense of security. But we already heard his word. He's already invited us. Some of you, you've been longing to experience the presence of God. You've been longing to have an encounter with God. But if you would, just in this moment, lift your hands one more time. I want you to know that our Father is here. He knows everything. There's nothing that happens in your world that catches him by surprise. He sees every tear. He sees every night up worrying, pacing the floor, crying out to him for his presence. Some of you just want him, just show me that you're real. I need you. But I want you to know that your father is here to embrace you in this moment, to take away every fear and every concern. All you have to do is ask him. Wrap me in your I me in your I in your Just talk to your father. Wrap me in Longing to go into his presence. Come on, say, take me. 